I'm just okay. Come back. This is what they call a Helgamite. I think the reason why I've always been attracted to fly fishing is because of where it takes place. The streams, the creeks, the rivers, just being able to be out there in these beautiful places. Fishing has always been something that I've wanted to do, but I've never taken the time to learn how to do it. Fly fishing involves an artificial fly that is usually tied um, with things like thread, feathers, natural things, sometimes synthetic things. I tried to fly fish before on my own using YouTube and maybe picking up a couple of articles and I've never been really able to get it right. Thinking back to the documentary that I had seen a few years ago called Live the Stream, it's a story of uh, Joe Humphreys, the legendary Pennsylvania angler. What got me addicted to fly fishing was the fact that I just loved the stream, I loved the flow, I loved the sound. I loved to play in the water, I loved to wait in the water. I love to look for things in the water. And so it was just a natural. I was bored with it. I went to look to see if Joe still teaches and I found this tiny school in Bradford, Pennsylvania that offered a fly fishing intensive. I reached out to see if I could get a spot and they were booked. There were no spots. And so I asked to be put on the wait list. And a few weeks later, I had gotten a spot. Next thing I know, I'm driving seven hours from Brooklyn, New York to Bradford, Pennsylvania. Stop for a quick meal here, and I'm gonna head out and to charge the car. And then we're gonna keep going to fishing school. Yeah, most of the people that were there were in their 40s or 50s or even 70s. I mean, Joe Humphreys, who was teaching us, was 94. When I saw him coming in in the morning, I, I thought, how amazing to be able to do the thing that you love for this amount of time, for, for this long. When I got there to the fishing school on our first day, there was a quick lecture in the beginning where the, the teachers of the school were sharing some insights and it quickly dawned on me that fly fishing is a little more than just fishing. And I was really happy to find out that there's so much philosophy and so much overlap with art in the sport. And I was just really happy and excited to meet all of these people and throughout the the weekend there was a lot of storytelling there was a lot of communion between everyone and you could really tell that these people loved to fish they were quick to answer any questions that you might have for me it was really endearing when at one point uh, I'm learning how to tie my own fly and um, they're sort of talking amongst themselves and saying, hey, uh, Aaron here wants to learn how to tie his own flies. What, what do you recommend? What, what kind of magazines or what kind of tools do you recommend he gets? And they're all talking amongst themselves and trying to really come together to figure out w what path to send me on. And uh, that was really telling of how much love they have for the sport and how much love they have for their craft that they are so open and willing to share what they know and so i spent an evening tying my own fly But it was really fun because I could see myself doing this. It, there's an art to tying flies. There is a combination of craftsmanship and knowledge of science.
This little green worm is a caddis. Mm. Caddis like rock worm. Uh, I would call that one a March brown, wouldn't you? That size? Oh, uh, that's a sulfur. Oh, is that one a sulfur? That's a March brown. Oh, the March brown's bigger. It, it's, it's similar to drawing or painting in a way because you're not replicating the fly to be, you know, 100% accurate. You're trying to create an impression of the fly so that when you present it to the fish, it resembles uh, the real thing. And so I thought that was, that was really cool and I could see myself just diving deeper into that. I found a lot of uh, relaxation in that process, even though in the beginning I was getting kind of frustrated because I, I was learning these, how to use these tools for the first time. The teacher that I had was really patient with me and saw me all the way through. And so I got to experience both the lessons on the stream and off the stream. I had uncovered a whole new world that I now want to be more a part of. I'll just start with, with how a typical day looked like. Practice our casting and Joe Humphreys taught us all kinds of techniques. It was really like watching a great musician play. Like he was able to do things that just seem like superhuman in, in, in the most subtle ways. He had this expression that he would say, it's like, it's all in the squeeze, the squeeze and the squeeze. And then we would have a lecture and immediately we would head over to the stream. Joe would teach us in the stream and on the first day, we could see him analyzing the water, reading the water, covering ground. And I'm actually happy that nothing happened because it was the most realistic, it was the most, uh, it was super, it was genuine. It was, it was how reality sometimes works, where you don't get to catch anything. But what's really cool is that Joe, he's a professional fisherman, but he, he, he's like, he will fish in front of you. He wants you to see the whole process because most professional fishermen won't fish in front of you because they don't want you to see them not catch anything, right? If you go on YouTube and you're looking up videos on fishing most of the people who are fishing are always catching something that's not always the case joe did such a great job of showing us how reality sometimes works and how the angler is supposed to respond to things not working out the way We'd, we'd want them to. We went on to the stream afterwards and then um, I tried to fish. I didn't have any luck. On the second day, it was raining and uh, Joe took us out into the stream and our whole class is there and we're, we're watching the, the great Joe Humphreys looking for this trout. For the beginning, he was casting, he was working the stream. I did my best to watch the way he, he moved, the way he positioned himself, the way he would navigate the stream. 
we, and we're all just there kind of at the edge of our seats just like waiting for something to happen and then Joe decides to go inside the water so he goes and he wades inside the water he makes a cast underneath some some uh, overgrown trees and boom there's a bite Right after Joe had caught his fish, it was our turn to go into the stream. And I went with my group and my instructor to a stream uh, further up ahead. My instructor came and uh, gave me some pointers. And I just kept covering ground. And at one point I remembered what Joe said about changing your fly if it's not working. And I decided to change it to one of the flies that I had tied the night before. And so I tied it and I went back to fishing. But still, nothing was biting, nothing was happening, there was no action. I, but I could see that my friend had just caught something. And so I just kept going. But this time, there was a pool and my pole just went it's like, oh. And so I set it very gently, but I wasn't sure if it was a log or a rock, but then it started to move upstream. And I was like, kind of looked around to see if there was anyone around me because I, I had never landed a fish before on a stream. And this was, this was different for me. The fish eventually was able to kind of get closer to me and by then my instructor is coming by and he takes out his phone and he starts taking a picture uh, of, of, the, of the fish and he helps me unhook it and we release it back into the water but I'll never forget that moment because it was it was a surreal moment for me to catch this beautiful brown trout it, it really happened right before I was ready to give up and, and go home. Um, I can't wait to get back on the stream. I'm already planning to go upstate. There's so many lessons, there's so many just things to learn in fly fishing and I think that's what appeals to me. Uh, Joe has a book actually. I was able to get Joe Humphrey's Trout Tactics book and he even autographed it for me. I'm thankful uh, for that school because it's been around now for 30 years and I, I really just can't wait to go back and see all my friends. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this video.